Right, I believe we are in uh, Afghanistan now, virtual Afghanistan at least. There's not much to see eh, down there. It's fairly bleak, fairly dry, not much around. Oh, top of descent is already showing 11.38, so in uh, 40 minutes and a bit. Not bad. It's not a long flight, actually. Yeah, it's uh, with uh, EASA and all the authorities, really. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite hot at the moment, yeah. all this uh, unusual attitude recovering and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, on the YouTube channel, I've created like playlist of these uh, uh, Twitch uh, uh, flights, and uh, it's uh, in three categories. I think I've I've done it. I've got uh, uh, flights in Europe and Africa. I've got flights in uh, Asia, uh, Middle East, Oceania, and uh, flights in the uh, Americas or so North, Central, and South America. So there's like three different playlists. And uh, yeah, at least that kind of um, uh, makes it like in three uh, three categories. If uh, you're looking for flights into a, a particular uh, geographical area, then it's maybe easier to find. Uh, so now I imagine uh, it's transitioned to uh, Kabul, yeah, on the FMC and the departure arrivals here. So now if we look at the uh, pressurization you can see uh, cabin altitude at the moment is not changed as 5600 and the landing altitude is now changed to uh, 5900 and the uh, differential pressure here 8.5 is still the same so I would imagine that during the descent uh, the cabin is actually gonna climb maybe a slightly a tiny bit but the cabin will certainly not descend because uh, it needs to be at uh, the altitude where we're gonna be landing so it's not gonna it's not gonna descend that's for sure and it might even climb a tiny bit to match the landing altitude it will be interesting to see uh, what the uh, cabin altitude is uh, during the approach maybe I'll try to uh, remember it but that's one of those things you know, uh, flying to these uh, high elevation airports. Uh, the cabin climbs initially, but then it will stay where it is. Uh, Guibert, yeah, uh, on the YouTube video, I've got uh, an approach on uh, Madeira, yeah, runway 05, uh, Arnav arrival on runway 05, uh, which I believe is only allowed for certain operators, they need uh, approval to do that. Or at least that was the case when I made the, the video maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, but yeah, if uh, you go on the YouTube channel, it's uh, it's there. Uh, do a search for uh, Madeira and uh, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's a fun place. And the simulator, uh, I'm sure it's uh, a little bit easier. But in real, I heard with the, the wind and the, the downdrafts, the turbulence, it's, uh, it can be interesting. Yeah, Runway 05 in Madeira. And now the airport is, uh, is a little bit better, the runway is longer, uh, but uh, many years ago it was uh, quite a short runway and uh, yeah, there was no room for error basically, so uh, nowadays it's a little bit better, but but the, um, uh, the weather and the wind around uh, the airport is uh, still the same, of course. Uh, Zenroyer, well, yeah. Um, I'm not sure about uh, medical conditions like uh, diabetes, if it's uh, totally uh, disqualifying or if um, if you can get your, your medical uh, with maybe a restriction. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, if you're interested in uh, aviation and you want to, uh, maybe you can ask uh, like uh, 
an aviation doctor, see what uh, what they would say. Um, I'm not exactly sure um, about uh, things like diabetes. It might be possible if it's under control. Uh, it might be possible with uh, with the restriction, maybe on the medical license, meaning that if you fly like uh, commercially, maybe you would need to uh, uh, to fly with a guy who doesn't have diabetes, uh, for example. But uh, I'm not sure. Okay, well, it's worth uh, finding out. Uh, for private license, yeah, um, depends also if it's like type 1, type 2, um, there might be differences there as well, but uh, I, I guess if uh, if it's under control, there might be yeah a restriction on the license, that's, that's, that's for sure, but uh, it might still be possible to get the, the class 1 medical. Yeah, I invite you to uh, to find out. Please do uh, do try to find out. You know, we're talking about like uh, medical uh, issues. That's uh, it's a job that is uh, subject to uh, to medical issues, of course. Um, there are guys who uh, regularly lose their medicals for like you know heart problems. And, uh, Some guys got like, you know, uh, various issues, you know, and uh, it's quite quick, you know, and easy to uh, lose your job, yeah. Yeah, like, with those uh, medical like, questions, um, the best thing really is to, uh, is to uh, go and see an aviation doctor. Uh, what they call the uh, AME, uh, an aviation medical examiner, and uh, go and ask the the questions. You know, uh, they will uh, they will know. Um. Uh, yeah, Max Zulu Hotel. Yeah, okay. Uh, in the states, so you can't get. Um, you can only go for a private license. Yeah, you can't go for a commercial license. But uh, yeah, as you say, you have to demonstrate that uh, you control the uh, you control the diabetes uh, well. Yeah. Uh, in case of uh, depressurization, uh, basically, what we would do first of all is to uh, protect ourselves. So uh, take the mask uh, here pull the mask there and uh, obviously uh, pull it on your face uh, then we uh, what we call uh, establish crew communication so uh, basically make sure we can talk to each other through the, the mask and the uh, interphone system and uh, then uh, check the, the uh, altitude uh, the cabin altitude and uh, rate which would uh, pop up here like this and uh, if we see for example that the uh, the cabin is climbing and the uh, art flow valve uh, well the two art flow valves are closed then the uh, basically the uh, the altitude is uh, is not controllable so we would uh, drop the uh, if it's not already dropped by itself but we would confirm that anyway uh, the uh, passenger oxygen uh, switch here uh, press that and deploy the oxygen masks and then uh, yeah descend so uh, I would uh, set like a lower altitude there uh, press fly level change uh, close the thrust levers deploy the speed brakes and go down initially um, maybe six seven thousand feet per minute as we accelerate towards uh, you need to kind of uh, fly uh, the uh, initial descent like close to the maximum speed to, uh, to get the highest a vertical uh, speed and the descent as possible so initially you will go down maybe at six seven thousand feet per minute then it would stabilize maybe at like five four four thousand feet per minute with the speed brakes full speed and uh, go down basically yeah, as quickly as you can um, a slow depressurization obviously is uh, 
is a little bit more manageable but if it's a bit uh, if it's a, like a, a big uh, bang and it's an explosive depressurization I think it's not a very nice event because if you uh, depressurize, depressurize the aircraft uh, uh, suddenly uh, physiologically it's uh, it's quite tough on, on the body I think your like your guts and everything goes it's a, it's a disaster so that wouldn't be very nice and obviously the, the physio physiological sides of depressurization we don't really train for because all we do is train in a simulator and we don't have the effects of you know the depressurization on, on the body so yeah I think it would be uh, quite nasty actually uh, yeah my Zulu hotel that will be uh, that would be good uh, the best uh, the best place to do that is uh, uh, going over the uh, Himalaya so uh, that's the that's the best place to practice the uh, the escape uh, routes yeah because with uh, for example Mount Everest uh, the uh, the safe altitudes uh, in these areas are like well over like 20 is it 26 or 28,000 feet something like that I think if you fly over uh, the Himalaya so um, yeah it takes a while to get to areas where you can descend further um, the uh, oxygen system on the aircraft on this one on the 777 is around 20-22 minutes so after 20-22 minutes the uh, passengers don't have any uh, more oxygen so you need to uh, you need to go down to a suitable uh, altitude uh, within the 20-22 minutes so you don't have long uh, and depends where you are uh, you kind of need to uh, you need to fight for you know your 20-22 minutes you really need to uh, to give it a good go because sometimes it's not uh, very easy above all in these uh, areas you know uh, where the safety altitude is like 26 28,000 then maybe a bit lower but uh, you don't get to uh, 14,000 and then 10,000 quite quickly. It takes a it takes a while to our good old active sky 80s. Oscar Alpha Kilo Bravo Airport information November 1050 Zulu weather wind 267 at 11 gusting to 20 visibility 10 sky condition ceiling 10,000 broken ceiling 18,000 broken temperature 24 dew point 1 QH 1019 advice on initial contact here information November Oscar Alpha Kilo Bravo Airport information November 1 Okay, so it looks like it's gonna be runway uh, 29. Uh, how long until Kabul? Uh, I would say about half an hour. Uh, it shows uh, arrival at uh, 54, so yeah, just under half an hour actually. It's not gonna be too long. So yeah, um, the wind is about 260 at something. Uh, what's the magnetic variation there? Because it gives you the true wind. 3 degrees east, yeah, so it's about 270, 270 degrees, it was a little bit gusty, quite cloudy, 24 degrees and 1019, so it will be a uh, runway 29. So, check our recall, there's nothing there, checklist, there's no notes, uh, 1019 is still the QNH, then we go into the FMC, and go for ILS 29. And web row transition, why not? I will execute this. Then after tapis, uh, we have a discontinuity. So we'll look at uh, the plan mode there. Wow. And let's see how we're gonna do this. The last waypoint is Tapis here, and then we go to Webro. So I'm gonna get rid of this intercept point here and go to Lilo. Yeah, I don't know why they keep putting these intercept points there. And then there's another intercept point after Mile Milo. 
I don't need that as well. And then there's another intercept point. Oh, why is the database like this? It's really bad. So execute this. And we keep yeah, the waypoints like this. And we were talking about uh, uh, making a custom waypoint. Uh, what we can do is make a custom waypoint for Webro here. So I'll take a Webro and the scratch pad. I uh, will make a waypoint maybe uh, 175 bearing and maybe 3 miles. So I we'll go 175 and 3 miles. And we'll put that into the discontinuity. And uh, fill the discontinuity. So you see, we created a waypoint here, some sort of uh, base waypoint uh, for uh, the ILS uh, uh, 29. Then we'll fill up the discontinuity and execute. At least this will give me an indication as to what I'm gonna fly. Uh, where, bro, uh, we're gonna reduce the speed already. 170. Because it's very steep. And then we check the uh, altitude 14,000 at Webro, that's correct. Uh, 11.2 at Lilo, that's good. 10.6 at Milo, uh, Stitch 10.2, yeah. And then Hegel, uh, what altitude is that? 9.8, yeah. And then all the way down to the runway, yeah, glide path 3.6, yeah, wow. And the missed approach is to Raloy, yeah, back to Kabul. Uh, V1, yeah, and to Lobre, fly level 180, wow, cool, so it's all in there, uh, transition is 160, good god, Cool. And then um, landing with uh, thirteen point seven of fuel, and we've got two thirty three point five. So let's say point two. Uh, landing weight, let's say, with a bit of uh, extra burn, 247 tons, and the flight plan was for, just to cross check, 246.7, yeah, so 247 tons, we saved a little bit of fuel, they're gonna give us a flap 31 for 8 knots, wow. It's a long runway, but we'll go auto break three, and I'll use the uh, I, uh, full reverse as well. And the minima, that's going to be the fun part. Uh, seven zero sixty. Wow, it's going to take me forever to get all the way to seven thousand. So that's pretty much it. We've got VRF set. The barrow is coming, but it's gonna take forever. Uh, we've got the QNH preset. The FMC is uh, set. Uh, we've got an auto brake. It's all good. Happy days. Descent checklist. Recall checked. Notes. Checked. Auto brake level 3, landing data. VRF is 148, minimums 7060 feet. VRF 148.
minimums seven zero six zero feet approach briefing completed descent checklist complete FMC message reset MCP altitude hey hey seatbelt signs coming on let's descend so initially uh, we'll go to 160 initially uh, the barrow yeah thank you that's it uh, Max Zuboteon thank you I forgot. I do 250 below uh, 160 to do a uh, 250 below uh, 10,000 feet above the airport because the airport is at 6,000 feet uh, uh, above sea level. Then we need to uh, to reduce the speed uh, earlier and uh, 16,000 feet kind of. Uh, represent uh, 10,000 feet above uh, above the airport so we'll do that good god I mean I'm sure this is nowhere near like uh, going to the real place because I guess the real place must be a mess there's a lot of military traffic uh, still I think there's still a lot of heavy uh, military presence um, and uh, yeah it must be uh, chaotic so what we're gonna do here is uh, it's probably nowhere near what it's like in real but it kind of gives us uh, a feeling for what the place is like you know the uh, the environment the terrain around the airport layout and all that stuff Right, descending. Oh ho! Cloud here, a little bit of a fluffy cloud. Beautiful. But by uh, by the regulations, you're not allowed to uh, fly an ILS uh, lower than 200 feet uh, if you're not uh, visual with the runway. So um, the the minima is basically uh, the lowest altitude you can fly to uh, until you become visual with the runway. If at the minima you're not visual with the runway, then you need to go around. Yeah, it's a fair amount of cloud here. Wow. Very nice. So, let's look at the terrain display, 15.3, okay. So I don't want to vector myself <laughs> into terrain, I don't want to vector myself into a mountain, so I'll uh, stick to this for the moment. I'll actually go terrain on my side as well, because there's not really any weather. Maybe put the weather on this side because there's no much weather around, and the main thing is the terrain. So,
Right, so we'll go heading select. We'll kind of give ourselves some sort of heading here. Vertical speed, and we'll start reducing the speed now. There's no point. One thousand feet to level off. There's no point zooming down with all those mountains and stuff. Uh, on the triple seven, you can't ride the barrow in the FMC. On the Airbus, you can, but not on the. Uh, uh, not on the triple seven. So the only place where you put the barrow is here, on the primary flight display, and the way to insert it is with the uh, on the uh, FS panel here. Rain looks a little bit better on there. We can maybe I'll wait a little bit, there's no rush to go down. We'll extend the center line from uh, Webro actually. And the inbound is 285. So we'll set 285 execute so now we've got a representation of where the uh, runway center line is right we go down to flyable 170 yeah quite cloudy Yeah, that's the airport. That's the airport down here. Wow. Yeah, it's in a kind of valley and a lot of mountains around. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Interesting place, man. Uh, Lilo was eleven thousand two hundred. I'll wait actually to go closer to a web row, I think, for the ILS. Go down to uh, 160 and then uh, transition. So ATC would vector you around, and they would have their like uh, radar minima uh, for terrain separation. Uh, here I use the, the terrain display because I'm not sure really uh, of the uh, uh, radar minima for vectoring and the uh, altitude. But for the moment, the highest is uh, 14,000 feet, which is possibly this little uh, green bit here. So I think we are good, but I'll uh, be quite conservative on uh, how I select my altitudes here because I don't really. As I said, I don't want to put myself on top of a mountain, so... Uh, 
so you see at uh, 250 knots uh, indicated uh, the true airspeed is uh, 325 knots and we are roughly 10,000 feet uh, above the ground if uh, you go to a sea level uh, airport and you are 10,000 feet um, you'll see that your true airspeed here is uh, there's not such a big gap uh, between the two between the indicated airspeed and the true airspeed and uh, the gap is bigger here because we are at like a high elevation right I'll come back on the speed oh rain is it rain? Yeah, that's rain there. I don't know if you can see it on the sc on the screen, but it is raining. Wow. Flaps one. Flaps one. Thank you for the follow, uh, Tumsk. Welcome to the uh, approach into Kabul. Approach checklist. Altimeters. One zero one nine set. One zero one nine. Approach checklist complete. Flaps five. Flaps five. Thank you for the follow, um, Tony at well uh, one four. Thank you. Cabin crew, prepare for landing. Flaps fifteen. Flaps fifteen. Now we can go down to 11.2, so that's what we'll do. Oh. Oop. It's bouncing up and down. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be arriving Ladies at our and gentlemen, shortly. Yeah. If you're making a connecting flight, Please see the customer if you're connecting in Kabul, good luck to you. The video monitors inside the terminal for connecting gate oh, now it has a glide slope. Okay. For your continued safety, flight attendants will now walk through the cabin to secure it for landing. We'll collect any off-service items, newspapers and any other items that you wish to discard or may not be taking off the aircraft with you. Also, in preparation Flaps for landing, 20. please turn off Flaps all 20. electronic devices. So I'll use uh, flaps 20 for more drag to help with the rate of descent and control the speed as well. It's now looking good, the localizer has been captured and we're going down towards the glide slope. Uh, now we can go down to 10,600. Quite good, quite good. All doing well. So it's okay for the moment. We are chasing the glide slope, uh, descending. So it's okay. Uh, we've got uh, the step altitudes along the way. So um, until Milo, 10,600 feet, and after Milo, we can go down to 10,200 feet at stitch. So it's okay to uh, kind of step down like this as we uh, as we go down. Hopefully, I will manage to catch the uh, uh, glide slope uh, soon, but uh, for the moment, it's okay. 
1,000 feet to level off. Okay, uh, so now down to 10,200 at stitch. Yeah, we're passing in this valley there. Check these mountains there on the side. We're just in the middle. On the other side as well. Yeah, wow. Uh, right, what's the stitch 10 2 and then eagle 9 8? Uh, so 9 8. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. Keep descending. So we'll go to 8,000 and go vertical speed and 2,000 feet or 1,800 feet per minute. It's a bit challenging. Eh? Gear down. Slope captured. Check. Flaps thirty. Flaps thirty. Oh ho. Twenty five hundred. Check. Cabin crew, take your seats. Cool. Hey Andreas, uh, Theodorsen, uh, there you go. Yep, thanks, uh, Mike Zulu Hotel. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Landing checklist complete. Checklist complete. Right. Good God. Yeah, it's a little bit hazy, yeah? we don't see much. I'll look around. Yeah. It's, uh, it's looking uh, quite uh, grim. It's very hazy. Ah, come on, auto throttle the speed. Take the speed, auto throttle. All right. The minima is actually very high. Eh? Check. Flight director. Check. Landing. One thousand. Check. Here's the runway, there's no puppy, there's nothing. The rate of descent is uh, crazy. Good God. Approaching two, nine. Yeah, the rate of descent we'll have to accept that it's gonna be uh, quite high because it's steep. Imagine if you are uh, getting there with uh, flap uh, 20. You'll be zooming down the approach like mad. There's no puppy, so it's difficult to know. Sink rate. Okay. Sink briefed rate. it. We briefed it. 50, we briefed 40, it. 30, 20, 10. Man, 
I really have to concentrate on this one. <laughs> Even here, in the simulator, obviously, I don't want to kind of uh, mess it up. But wow, I really had to concentrate on this. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, that was hard work, man. Wow. We made it. Okay to clean up. Okay to clean up. Ah. It's uh totally out of sequence. Okay to clean up. Check. All right. Whoa, what's that in the scenery there? It's like fire and smoke. And gentlemen, this Good is God. Of our flight. Who's made that Please scenery? Seated with your seat belt fastened until the captain has turned off the seat belt sign and the aircraft is parked safely. This would be your indication that it is safe to move around the cabin, gather your belongings and disembark. We'd like to thank you for flying with us today. We appreciate your business and <laughs> yeah. hope to see Plumes you once again on a future flight. Thank you. Uh, Kabul here, um, Kim KFPS uh, Kabul. Yeah, it's quite cloudy and hazy on the approach. Wow. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, good luck. Good luck, good luck to those guys going there, man. Because. Uh, it's quite scary. Uh, I think GSX is not working here, so I'll just park somewhere. Uh, shut it down and call it a day, I guess. Welcome to Kabul, boys and girls. <laughs> 